we are now going to look at the the devices that are involved in the process of ICT information and communication technology we're going to look at input output storage and communication let's get started so first let's look at input very common input device we use it to control our computer, give instructions. That's pretty easy. We can see that we've got the function keys here at the top, F1 through to F12. We've got the QWERTY keys here. We call this a QWERTY keyboard, QWERTY, because Q-W-E-R-T-Y. That's about it. Space bar over there. This is a very cool key, the Windows key or the Windows menu key. When you tap on that, it brings up the Windows menu. Control key, shift key for changing case or selecting a different um, uh, character on a particular key. Here we have our arrow keys here and a numerical keypad on the right hand side. Next we have the mouse. I'm sure you are familiar with the mouse, obviously. This is a wireless mouse. Here you can see is the receiver. It uh, sends out a little signal that this mouse then connects with and you can control it wirelessly. The stylus is actually a, it's like a pen. In fact, I've got, I've got a little baby one here. Look there, there you go, little baby one there. And the stylus is a very particular kind of pen. It's made for working on touch screens. Any screen that is touch screen, you have a special nib at the end and you can then draw or control things with a stylus on your touch screen. The microphone, something that we use when we are recording, like I am now. The microphone is very important. It's also an input device. The webcam, I don't know why, but a lot of uh, grade 10s, particularly even grade 11s, think that the webcam is an output device. A camera captures information, so stuff has to go into it, okay? So it's a webcam, it's, it's an input device, it's not an output device. There is another input device, touchscreen because it's a, although it's also an output, don't get confused now, a touch screen is input and output, because output, because you can, it's outputting information, you can see what's on the screen, but it's also input because you can touch it and you can give it instructions, you can do things with the operating system, like you would with a mouse or a keyboard. A biometric fingerprint scanner, also an input device, it captures data. So if something is capturing information, it's an input device. A typical scanner, this is a flatbed scanner. You can see we've got like a magazine or a brochure on there. And that's a nice, quick, easy way of converting anything that is hard copy, printed materials, into digital soft copy. That was input. So let's look at output. Devices involved with output. Here we go. The monitor is pretty much the obvious one. Speakers for sound output. A gaming console. Now, you might think, hang on, this is supposed to be an input. And yes, uh, the buttons and the controls, that is part of input. However, a lot of consoles have dynamic feedback or what they call tactile feedback. That means it vibrates and that is touch response. So the tactile feedback is actually an output feature of a gaming console remote. A printer a very, very well-known output device long before a lot of these other fancy devices came around. The printer produces what we call a hard copy, something you can see and touch. Okay, I don't have a hard copy with me. Something you can see and touch, that is what the printer produces, a hard copy. So then that means soft copy is obviously the opposite. It's something on the computer, you can't touch it physically. The projector is a output device it's very powerful because you can project data or information what is on your computer screen you can project onto a massive screen for more than you know five people to look at instead of having everyone gathered around a monitor you can project the information and it then is visible to an entire auditorium that was output devices Let's have a look at storage, because this is also part of the ICT process. So storage, the HDD, 
the hard disk drive. Now, you might see in your classroom disks, uh, well, uh, something that looks like this. Now, that's not actually a hard disk drive. That's the case that the hard disk drive is contained in. The hard disk drive is actually here. Here it is here, and I think I've shown you in a previous video what it does, what it looks like, so you are familiar with this. That's a hard disk drive, magnetic storage, permanent storage, everything goes on there. What's nice is where we are going now in the future, okay? And it's, I mean, it's already here, but it will get better and better as time goes by and technology gets more affordable. Solid state drives. This is a solid state drive. It's also a storage device. It's got these chips that everything gets stored on electronically. It's not a magnetic drive, no moving parts, very quiet, you don't hear it, very reliable and safe, you can drop it, your data is still good to go. Ah, yes, the good old staple USB memory stick, what we used to use a lot. Um, don't put your homework on stuff like this. Don't put the only copy of your notes onto a USB memory stick. Yes, they're pretty reliable, but they get lost. They get lost or left in places. Don't do it, okay? This is a flash drive. It's kind of like the SSD drive we saw earlier. This was the precursor to SSD drives. This, it's electronic storage, flash storage, whatever you want to call it, but please don't call it a USB. This is not just a USB. It's a USB memory stick or a USB flash drive or a USB stick, whatever you want, but, or flash drive even. Oh, I said flash drive, sorry. So please um, don't just say, oh, it's a USB. It's a USB what? SD cards, secure digital cards, started out pretty big. And as you can see, they got smaller and smaller and smaller to micro SD. Um, I think you get nano SD cards as well, even smaller. So again, another form of storage. This is also static storage, electronic, very secure, very safe. Also very easy to get lost. Random access memory. We have discussed this in a previous video. This is a form of storage. However, if you remember from a previous video, it's temporary storage, okay? It's not permanent. It's only holding whatever you're working with at the time. It's holding it in that RAM, okay? When you are done, you save your work because if you don't save your work, the RAM gets cleared when you shut down the computer or if there's a power failure, for example. Optical disks, you've seen these, we still use them. I don't know why we still use them. We don't use them so much anymore though. The compact disks, about 700 megabytes, 750 megabytes at the most. Then we have DVD disks, digital versatile disks. Uh, they would hold 4.7 gigabytes of data. And then Blu-ray disks. Blu-ray is also sort of like falling away. Everything is just disappearing for better storage solutions. Again, we still have these. These are written too with a laser. Uh, laser means light. We are focusing light beams or light frequencies onto the disk and burning information onto the disk. However, people don't use these so much anymore because they can break easily. They can get lost very easily and, uh, I mean, and they can get damaged very easily. You just scratch one disk, you'll find out what I'm talking about. The last thing is communication. Now, with communication, I only have one device and then applications, okay, I'll, I'll show you. Communication tools. In, in terms of information and communication technology, let's have a look. The cell phone, the smartphone. The reason I'm using the smartphone, there are other, there's tablets and laptops and things, but I'm gonna show you this one because they actually all share the same features. So let's have a look at some of the communication tools in terms of software that we have available. We can email, send messages, attach files, and send those to people anywhere, anytime, anywhere in the world. So, um, what's that? Oh, WhatsApp, <laughs> I nearly said Skype. WhatsApp, another one, voice over internet protocol. We've got Twitter. We have Google Duo for making phone calls and video calls, just like WhatsApp, so it's Google's own version. We have Instagram, the bane of uh, my life. I don't even use Instagram, but hey, you go ahead, you use it if you want to. Facebook, I don't think anyone uses Facebook. I use Facebook, but I'm old, so it's okay. TikTok, never tried it, but hey, it's a very popular communication tool. A lot of teenagers are using it at the moment. It's probably gonna die away in another year, you'll see. YouTube, been around for years. Fantastic, fantastic application. You put the videos on like this one. Snapchat, never used it, but again, a very popular communication tool. 
So in a nutshell, that is the ICT process, input, output, storage, communication, the devices that we use and the various software applications that are involved with that.